What's up guys, this is Riley Hodson here with Hodson Motors. Today we are giving you guys the walk around on our newest and greatest giveaway truck. This is our 1983 Ford F350, 69 diesel, five speed manual, Dana 60 swap. Guys, I gotta tell you, this is my favorite truck we have ever given away. We have put our heart and soul into this truck every single day for the past few months and it is so awesome. And I am absolutely in love with this truck. I cannot wait, I'm so stoked for this giveaway and I really hope that you guys like it too. For those of you who don't know, here at Hodson Motors, we build, sell, restore, and give away classic vehicles. And uh, this is our newest giveaway truck, this 83 Bullnose F350. Let's go around the truck real quick, show you all the good stuff that we have on it. You'll get to see all the hard work that we've put into it. So starting off, Bullnose is the term that is referred to Ford trucks from 1980 to 1986. Uh, it is one of my favorite era trucks. This would be considered maybe the first era of the OBS Ford truck. So. OBS stands for old body style and normally refers to 92 to 97 Ford trucks, but was originally a term used to describe trucks that had 7.3 diesels, but were the old body style because some trucks had 7.3 diesels, but were new body style. That OBS term has kind of morphed and evolved to include all the trucks that have this style of cab. If you look at this cab or the cab off of a 90 or an 87 to 91 or a 92 to 97, the cab is the same. So they all can kind of fall under this OBS Ford umbrella, but however, this is referred to as the bull nose, uh, 87 to 91 is referred to as the brick nose, and then the arrow nose is the 92 to 97. So the bull nose is probably in my top three favorite Ford trucks of all time. It's a very, very, very iconic design, really cool big grill on the front, and it's just a, just a, a rad truck. You get some of those nicer amenities from a OBS Ford, but still with a little bit more of a classic styling looks look, still looks like a very classic truck. You still get sealed beams, all that kind of stuff. Very cool. So let's go around and show you all the things that we've done to it. So up front here, we have that very iconic bull nose grill. It's a really, really, really cool design as it takes up kind of the whole entire of the front fascia, but they're cool. They're, they're multiple pieces. So you have two stainless pieces, top and bottom, and then uh, your two headlight bezels on both sides. And then you have a grill insert here in the middle. So it's like a five piece grill. But they're very cool and you still get sealed beams, which I think makes trucks look classic. I think trucks that have like the whole headlight is a, is a housing with a like a, a, a numbered bulb that goes into it is more modern. And then the sealed beam look is a more classic look. Uh, so these seven by six LED headlights, we actually sell these on our website. Just to do a little shameless plug here on this video, we, we sell these lights on our website. They're very, very, very bright. They make driving your classic at nighttime very doable, so I highly suggest them. But in terms of the front end, we, we did our best to polish up all, uh, everything we could use that was original Ford parts, we reused on this truck. Anything that we had to buy again, we did. But if anything was in decent enough shape, we thought for sure we'd rather save it and polish it back up and make it nice rather than buying cheap reproduction stuff. The, the, the old school stuff, even if it's a little scratched up, a little beat up, is, in, is, is always better. So this front bumper is the original bumper that came on this truck and it's in great, great, great condition. Uh, we used our triple lot steel wool trick. Using triple lot steel wool, you clean the chrome up really, really, really nice. And then we did new bumper guards, which I think is the most classic look on an old truck is to have a, your factory bumper with the bumper guards. It just looks mean, like two big, you know, walrus teeth po poking up. Uh, underneath the bumper guards here, we see the front hangers for the leaf springs. Uh, the reason why we did this is we're using a Skies Off-Road Designs Shackle Reversal Kit, and this kit is designed to use Super Duty Springs. So Super Duty Springs are a little bit longer than what the trick, this truck would have accommodated for, so you get a little bit of poke out front here. I actually think it's cool because anybody who knows anything about these trucks knows that that means this truck has been swapped. That means that this truck steers better and handles better and rides better because it's on Super Duty Springs and has the shackle in the rear. Ford had a faulty design and put the shackle up front on their trucks. So as you went over bumps, you got more bump steer and it route, rode worse. Everyone knows that putting the shackle in the rear rides better, handles better, does everything else better. So we did shackle reversal to swap in that Dana 60 front axle. Down here we have our Dana 60 front axle out of a 95 Ford F350. Uh, this is a highly coveted front axle. They are, they steer great. They're very strong, very stout axles. And we did a restoration on this axle and did all new steering components, all new brake components. So we've got new brakes from StopTech and all new Moog steering components uh, with one inch tie rods, not seven eighths. So very heavy duty, very stout stuff. And uh, it looks great. It's just a massive, massive, massive improvement. Probably one of the best and the hardest things that we've done on this truck was this front axle swap, but absolutely worthwhile. It rides great, it steers great, it's really cool. And it's just one of those really, really, really cool improvements that you do that adds so much value to a vehicle is to have a Dana 60 in the front. So it's really cool and turned out awesome. So I'm super pumped about that. 
Coming down the side here, you can see more of this beautiful bright red on Oxford white two-tone paint with the silver and black two-tone pinstriping. This pinstriping is from phoenixgraphics.com. Very, very, very nice stuff. Um, it is not molded to fit our fender wells. And so you can see, you know, the, the, the curve isn't perfect as we tried our best to heat it and curve it. We did this all in house. Uh, we are not professional vinyl layers by any way, shape or form, but it came out really, really, really nice. And the vinyl is, is high quality, so you can stretch and form it without it tearing or, or, or warping or anything like that. So that's super nice as well. Let's squat down and look at this wheel and tire. So for wheel and tire, you might be thinking, it's a dually, what's going on? These aren't dually fronts. Um, the Dana 60 we used was not, a, was not a dually Dana 60. It was a single rear wheel Dana 60. And so uh, if you know anything about axles, you'll have a dually axle will have like a kind of a spacer. And it's like a big five inch spacer that bolts to the hub itself um, and replaces you, you know, the, where your regular lug nuts would bolt. Uh, we could not find a dually spacer and didn't want to pay a bunch of money for crappy old used ones, rusty ones. I found a couple rusty ones like on Facebook Marketplace, but didn't want to do with any of that. So instead we decided to run matching wheels front and rear, the same style of wheel, but the fronts are regular front wheels and the rears are dually rear wheels. Uh, so we're running American Racing. These are their Baja Polish 16 inch wheels with 35 inch Milestar tires wrapped around them. And then if you look in here inside the wheel and you peek back there, you'll see some bright red calipers. We did some red calipers, even though you really can't see them, they look cool to have some red calipers to match the paint. I was kind of nervous about the wheel and tire setup with it being mismatched like this, not having dually wheels in the front and dually, rears in the, dually wheels in the rear. But I think it looks really, really, really cool. And the stance is perfect where it lines up with the fender wheel. It's just absolutely, absolutely perfect. One downside to doing this and one downside to running uh, regular front wheels is that you have no spare tire for the fronts. So, you get a blowout in the front, you, you know, you have to carry two different size spares and all that kind of stuff. So that's a downside, but with a classic like this, you know, hopefully you're being a little bit more careful and whatnot. And, and, uh, and but if you're going to do long distance trips or really put this truck to work, if you win it, you might want to just get a spare tire that fit the front and spare that would fit your rears. Coming down the side, uh, like always, we keep our factory emblems and we restore them. We did some really nice black pinstriping inside those emblems. Those came out great. We have the factory tow mirrors on these. Uh, which are super cool. So these are the mirrors that would flip out, you know, and then you'd rotate your mirror around. Uh, but they were in great, great, great shape. And I think tow mirrors on big trucks are necessary. I, you know, sometimes you see a big old truck and it's got like the little F-150 mirrors on it and it just looks totally out of place. So a big truck deserves big, big, big mirrors. And that's what this thing has. Keep walking down the side. Nice, great quality reflectors we have on there. That all looks great. And then you can see the, the dually wheels down here. They match the fronts very nicely. They look correct. It's the same exact wheel, just one's a dually and one's for like a regular truck. Down the side, we build up some custom mud flat brackets to clear the 35s. The, the factory spot, they would run right, would, would have ran right into the 35s. Got our Banks exhaust. This truck sounds so good, so I can't wait to start it up so you can hear it. Uh, down the back, we got brand new tail lights. I'm gonna get this question a lot, so why don't we check out what's in the bed? Uh, if you look over there, we've got brand new bed liner, and then it does have a gooseneck ball. So you guys are gonna always ask, is it a gooseneck ball or fifth wheel hitch? It's got a gooseneck ball with the trailer plug up there so you can haul a fifth wheel if you want, or, or a, a gooseneck trailer. So that's really nice and will be perfect for hauling a trailer if you're gonna put this bad boy to work. Uh, this is the bumper that came on the truck when we purchased it. This is like a 90s ranch hand bumper. Um, is in phenomenal shape and looks really cool and fits the truck. Normally I like a more custom looking bumper on an old truck, but this is really cool. Uh, the tailgate is one of my favorite parts. Here on the tailgate, this is an original 1983 tailgate. The reason why we did this, and, and so the truck came with the tailgate, but it was a cheap, Chinese repop and the cheap Chinese tailgates on these things, they absolutely suck. They get stuck, you have to cut them off and that was the case with ours. The, the tailgate mechanism and everything worked but the tailgate itself was stuck and was not letting it release. And so we had to cut our old tailgate out and then found this factory tailgate. This is an 83 factory tailgate. Took it down with the truck to the paint body shop and uh, they did a little bit of body work on it, cleaned it up, made it look nice and it just is one of my favorite pieces on the whole entire truck. It, is awesome and then we did the matching vinyl striping on the tailgate with black letters with the white center and it just looks really cool. I love the way the tailgate turned out. With that being said, let's uh, let's go up front and pop the hood so that you guys can see what's under there. It looks great. The hood, we have a 6.9 international indirect injection. Normally would be a naturally aspirated motor, but we bought a brand new bank Sidewinder turbo kit with their entire exhaust and downpipe and everything like that and it runs so freaking good. It builds boost great, doesn't build a ton of boost. Uh, we didn't do head studs on the engine, so we're keeping the boost to 10 pounds, but even with 10 pounds, the thing cruises. It is a blast to drive. It is way faster than it was 
with, uh, with no turbo. When it was naturally aspirated, it was an absolute dog. But the thing sounds super cool. Uh, also under the hood, we did some wiring cleanup. We did a 90s windshield wiper reservoir and coolant reservoir. We did a uh, brand new radiator. These radiators are massive for the diesels and they don't reproduce these. Um, I looked all over the country, could not find one. Found a shop in Las Vegas who he said he had one. I showed up to buy it and his employee was like, oh dude, I'm so sorry, I scrapped it yesterday. So had, the, had our original radiator record. Uh, we got all new hoses, new, new AC lines, all sorts of stuff like that up under the hood. And uh, if you guys know anything about Power Stroke diesels or international diesels, they're not the prettiest to look at. They don't look as cool as like a Cummins. Whereas a Cummins, you see all six valve covers on top and it looks really cool and the turbo's off to the side. These are a little less, you know, attractive under the hood, but, but having done a 7.3, these were way easier to work on than a 7.3. There was a lot more space. And uh, to do the Banks kit, it was not easy. It also wasn't impossible, you know, with a little bit of help and some helping hands to someone to help push the downpipe up and get it in place, that kind of stuff. It was, it was doable. It took us about three days to do the turbo install. Not that bad. But overall, very clean. The engine runs really good. Uh, we're not quite finished up as of making this video. We're gonna replace a little bit more of the AC components like our, our AC dryer and stuff like that under the hood. But regardless, it looks really good and everything fit in there really nice and neat. And, uh, and it just runs great. Some other things that we're gonna continue to work on, things that as we're, as we're finishing it up and we notice things like we use stainless, we always use all stainless hardware throughout, but we use stainless hardware up here where the, behind it is all black. And so like our, our screws pop out and they stick out like a sore thumb. We'll paint those up black and put them back in so that things look like, like they should pretty much. So let's hop inside the truck and show you the interior. I really love how the interior turned out in this truck and, and I think you guys will too, so let's go hop in. All right. So inside here in the interior, I really like it. It's very simple, uh, nice and dark interior with the wood grain trim on the dash. So let's just start with these seats. These seats are Super Duty seats from 99 to 02 Super Duty. I think these were the Harley Davidson edition because they have a red stitching, black leather red stitching. They look awesome and they fit great in this truck. Um, it was one of the reasons why we bought the truck. When we saw pictures of it, we saw the interior, we said, man, the interior looks really clean as is, let's buy it. And then we ended up redoing almost everything else in the interior, bought the seats. So that is what it is, not the end of the world. Um, but black headliner, black carpet, brand new carpet kit, uh, new shift boots and new shifters for our ZF5 five-speed manual swap. So let's talk about the manual swap now. Uh, these trucks would have had a T18 four-speed manual transmission. And we swapped in this five-speed ZF5 five-speed manual transmission with the transfer case from like the same thing we got the front axle out of a 95 F350. Um, the ZF5 is a great manual transmission. I've talked about it in other videos, uh, like compared to a, an NV4500 transmission that you find behind a Cummins, I think the ZF5 is superior. I think the throws are shorter. I think it's a better transmission. I think the gearing's better. Uh, so it's really great to have the ZF5 and have an overdrive. Because then you can actually drive this thing on the freeway. The T18 in here, you were maxed out like 60 miles an hour. So now with 35s on 410 gears with a five-speed manual, you'll be able to do 90 miles an hour easy in this truck. So it's super cool. Also got the Ford factory shifter. And so everything in here looks like it's meant to be. Nothing looks out of place and I really like that. Uh, right in front of me, I have my Forever Sharp 15 inch steering wheel, wood grade steering wheel. Big shout out to Forever Sharp. They've always treated us really good. We sell their, their wheels on our website as well. Um, their adapters and everything and it fits great in this truck. And then behind the steering wheel, we have our gauges. Uh, this is a new company we just started working with called New Vintage. And they sell a, a really cool retrofit kit for these trucks. It gives you like a cool aviator style gauge. Uh, they're really nice gauges. They come with uh, uh, they come with the computer built into the back of the main two gauges rather than having like a standalone computer like a Dakota Digital. I love Dakota Digital gauges. They're a great gauge cluster. We've ran them in another bullnose and my customer Mike's Bronco. Um, but you have to find a place to mount the computer whereas the computer in this, in these gauges is mounted behind, is, is part of the gauges. So it's really nice and I like that. Uh, we've got really good condition, original wood grain trim for the dash that we cleaned up and redid all the silver around the edges. Uh, we've got a retro sound radio there. Uh, some of the best Bluetooth in the world. Another shameless plug, we sell those on our website too. Our factory air conditioning, um, Bullnose air conditioning works phenomenally. I mean, better than some modern air conditioning. It works so stinking good and blows super hard, so I love that. Uh, another thing we did in here were these really cool door panels, did a little red accent in them, cleaned them up really nice with some billet door handles and then new lower door carpets to match the brand new carpet down below. Um, our dash pad was reupholstered before we got the truck, so besides the dash pad, and the seats, everything else in here we touched. Um, like all of our pan, all of our trim we redid and all that kind of stuff, all of our A pillar, B pillar trim. Uh, but the dash pad was reupholstered in leather and still looks really, really, really good. And then it's gotta be probably my favorite part about the whole entire truck is this hat holder. We put in one of these, we call this truck the Rancher. And so what kind of a ranch truck would it be if you can't hide, 
If you can't keep your, your, your landscaping hat, your fishing hat, in your truck safe and sound so nobody sits on it and nobody crushes it. Pull that baby down, hold your hat up there. If you've got a cowboy hat or a fishing hat, holds it up there super nice. I think it's such a cool, you know, very vintage thing to do. We found that on eBay. I think they still sell them, but found that on eBay and uh, looks great, works great, and keeps your hat up there nice and secure. Um, but that's pretty much it here in the interior. It's very comfortable. The seating position with these Super Duty seats is perfect. Uh, it gives you great leverage for the clutch and everything. Clutch feels perfect in this truck. It's nice and smooth, very linear. Doesn't feel spring-loaded where it wants to kick back at you, so that's really nice as well. Uh, so with that being said, let's, uh, let's go take this baby for a cruise and we'll, uh, we'll go enjoy it a little bit. Guys, we are driving the 83 Bullnose. Uh, this is our first real drive of this truck. You know, not just around the block and around the corner just to make sure everything works. It's our first real drive and it's doing great. Steering is good and, uh, and I hoped, hoped it would be as we replaced all the steering components, but steering is good. Uh, it's easy to turn. It does. It's not like you have to turn it with two hands or anything hard. Turbo builds boost and you know, our EGTs are running good. Gauges work. Fuel gauge works, coolant temperature works, everything's there. So, you know, so far so good. This is this is very nerve wracking, uh, especially doing this on video for you guys. That this is our first real drive. That something could go wrong while we're doing this. We, that's happened to us before, once before with our Blazer. We had our Blazer breakdown on us one time while we were well, on our very first drive while we were filming it. But it is what it is. So, but this thing actually is doing great. Brakes are good, uh, nice and firm. Uh, clutch is great. Clutch feel is great, and shifter is great. So pumped about that as well so that's a lot of fun we tried to set the toe with our little diy toe alignment but looks like we're off so we'll have to reset our toe it uh it's doing pretty good that's yeah, so a built boost yeah but it's nerve-wracking to do this and do this on film is to go out and film right after you've just finished a truck um but you know it's not that loud here windows are down sounds great still um still can talk to adrian right here talk to the camera but uh it's running really good i'm, I'm pumped about it um we're gonna do some further adjustments after we're done driving it, like uh, turn up the fuel a little bit more, get it to roll a little bit of coal. I don't like a really smoky vehicle, uh, but right now this is just a really clear haze coming out of the tailpipe. So we're gonna turn that up a little bit, uh, but the steering is great. We'll just reset our toe one more time and try and get it straight. I was most nervous about, uh, about the steering and it's doing great. And uh, you know, we were trying to be conservative with how much we turned up our fuel screw uh, because we didn't head stud this we don't want to go making crazy boost um but it looks like we could have gone a little bit a little bit more on the fuel screw and that's okay you know this is just the ins and out of building the truck and figuring out this kind of stuff no but it's exciting it's fun truck runs great steers great sounds great i mean uh, a turbo 69 sounds so cool it really does just sound just super throaty kind of like a 60 power stroke but better and uh so that's rad. Something I failed to mention before was our, uh, our dual fuel tank. This truck has dual fuel tanks and they work and it even reads correctly on the gauge and everything, which is, in my opinion, pretty freaking cool that those things still work and that you're not just like, oh, you know, just running on one of the two tanks or whatever. That's how we got it. We fixed that, we put a new tank in and, and redid all of that and the, and the tank selector switch and all that kind of stuff and it miraculously all works. So that's, that's awesome. I feel great about that. All right, well, uh, with that being said, the truck is stupid fun to drive. I really love it. I think it is definitely my favorite giveaway truck that we've ever done. I put so much of my own blood, sweat, and tears into this thing that, like, I, I, I don't know. Whoever wins it better love it. But with that being said, we've had people sell our trucks after they've won a giveaway, and it really, it, I don't want to say it offends me because it's their truck. Once they win, they can do whatever they want with it. But we don't want that to happen with this truck because we've put so much stinking work into it that, this giveaway, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna do a cash buyout option. So if the winner of this truck can either truck, take the truck home or they can take home 25 grand in cash and I'll keep the truck for myself. So something we've never done, we've never done a cash buyout option, but uh, I love the truck too much to let it go to somebody and have them just turn around and flip it. It would, it would, it, I don't know, it'd probably bother me. So rather than do that, they just want money, they can take the cash and I'll keep the truck for me. But with that being said, the giveaway is going to start uh, if you're watching this video, the giveaway has already started. The giveaway started on July 22nd. It goes until August 14th at midnight. 
you want to enter in to win it, you go to HudsonMotors.com. Every $5 you spend is one automatic entry to win. You buy anything on the site. We have tons of bullnose specific items if you really love bullnoses that you can get. But anything on the website gets you entries in to win. Uh, we don't do double entries, 10 times entries, 20 times entries, none of that crap. We keep it to one entry for every $5 spent for the entirety of the giveaway so that you can get in whenever you can get in. You don't have to feel like, oh, my, my entries got devalued because I got in on the wrong day. We don't like doing that. So get in whenever you want. Uh, we keep our giveaways short and sweet. The less time that we run a giveaway for, that means the less people get entered and the better your chances are of winning. We don't run our giveaways for crazy amounts of time so that you guys know your odds of winning are actually pretty stinking good. But with that being said, you gotta get in, you gotta get entered in to win it. If you love it, check it out, hotsandmotors.com. And if you like this video and you wanna see more about classic trucks and more about our giveaways, subscribe to us here on YouTube, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos, and make sure you check us out on Instagram at Hots and Motors. Uh, we post daily on our stories and, and we post all the time there, all sorts of updates with what we're working on. So, uh, so yeah, check us out. And uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. But we really appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for participating in these giveaways. We'll catch you on the next one.